Hey guys, Matt here. So we're at home in the kitchen. Uh, just thought you'd like to join us. We're gonna go ahead and throw together a batch of uh, smoked salmon. So we've got our uh, coho salmon out here. This is fish that we caught last summer. So we'll go ahead and let that thaw out and uh, then we'll get to pulling the pin bones on it. I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can use pliers like these to either pull the pin bones out or you can just use a knife to uh, cut the cut the bones out. The pin bones run like that toward the top of the flay cupping the middle of the flay. So what you want to do is bring your finger up under the pin bones like this kind of tug them up, expose them a little bit. Sometimes they'll be inside the flesh a little more than these ones are. But if that's the case, you just kind of rub your finger up into the flesh a little bit. So to start, I just take my knife and place it under the pin bones and just kind of cut in. On the edge here, you can sometimes see the end one. That'll give you a little bit of a guideline. And as you're cutting in, you can feel it kind of grinding on the pin bones, just rubbing on them. And as you go along, just keep going deeper toward the bottom of the flay. Alright, so that's one cut done. These are all the pin bones right here. You can kind of see them, these white things right here. Those are all pin bones, you can probably even hear it. So these fish will be stripping for our uh, smoke fish, so if you're going to be grilling these up you don't really want to cut like that, otherwise it'll yeah, be a couple of chunks of fish. Not as easy to cook and they'll dry out quick, so. So to get the other half out you just go on the other side of them and just do a straight cut down. And that there's the string of pin bones. There's not, there's a little bit of waste but not very much compared to the rest of the fish. So, so that's done. Now I'll show you the other way of uh, pulling the pin bones out with the pliers. You can see on this one, this would have been toward the head. So the pin bones should be going that way. Now I already attempted one of these flays already and the pin bones seem pretty tough to pull out so I'll just try my best here. Kind of helps if you can, same thing, just kind of rub your finger under them, expose them like that, and lay your pliers in sideways like this. Just pinch and pull out and away. Just like that. Just run your finger across them, make sure you didn't miss any. You can leave them in if you want, but we usually just pull them out because it's a, a pretty low effort process for uh, more enjoyment of the smoke fish. Nobody likes choking on uh, pin bones, so. So that one's done. We'll go ahead and uh, do the rest of these. Also another thing to note is that the pin bones are mostly on these middle portions toward the head. Once you get to about two thirds of the fish or halfway down the fish toward the tail here, there usually aren't many, maybe just a couple at the start there. On these you can just kind of rub your finger right here and you can usually just feel a couple of ends from where they cut it. But this feels like they got most of them, just a couple of little tiny pieces here. All right. We'll go ahead and go through the rest of these. All right, so we got our fish all pin boned out. We're gonna go ahead and start stripping this up. This is the belly piece, so it's really thin. We'll just go ahead and cut a couple of wide strips there. <clears throat> And 
like so. And as you get into this thicker part, usually I just go about half inch strips. Just take a nice smooth cut, make sure your knife's sharp. For me, I've just got a regular old flaying knife here. Helps if you just cut through the flesh first, then go back for a second pass on the skin. It can be a little tough sometimes. So That one I'll just leave like that. These will shrink down in the salt brine. So yeah, that's about all there is to it. Finish up cutting these, and then we'll get on to our uh, salt sugar brine. Alright, so we'll go ahead and uh, work on our, our uh, brine here. We've just got some pickling and canning salt and some dark brown sugar. And we just go by a pretty default ratio. One cup of salt, two cups of sugar. Get a whisk over here, mix it together. Maybe in this bowl a fork would work better. Could use a bigger bowl. Just use your fingers if you want. So that's done. You got your fish over here. And just a container here, canning bowl. We'll just start by sprinkling some of your salt sugar mix down the bottom there. And then just grab each, each strip and just start laying them out. Just do a layer and then Sprinkle some of this on. So yeah, you don't have to worry about getting every last bit coated. It liquefies and just turns into a brine, so just as long as you get a good amount of sugar and salt in there. So the salt will cure this and of course the sugar will give it a nice touch of sweetness. Okay, so that part of the process is done. We'll go ahead and put these in the fridge overnight. Put some plastic wrap over them and uh, we'll usually let that go for about 10 hours and we'll pull them out in the morning, give them a taste, see how they are and we'll go from there. If there's anything you can take away from this, uh, easier if you use a, a square vessel then you don't bend your pieces up. Just makes it easier to rack them later so go ahead and do that if you want but anyway we'll pick this up in the morning and uh, yeah, go from there. Alright, so it's morning now. We're gonna go ahead and uh, start greasing our racks here. <clears throat> we just use a Big Chief smoker. Nothing too fancy. <clears throat> we'll just grab a paper towel, get some corn oil and or whatever your choice of oil is and just grease your racks. Helps release the fish once it's done smoking. So here's the rack, 
cookies uh, just slide into these trays here. So we'll have that on hand and we'll go ahead and just start rocking this fish here. So what I do is I grab each piece and I just kind of uh, squeeze the brine off it like so. And always lay your skin side against your rack, but that will keep it from sticking to the rack as much. The flesh sticks a lot easier than the skin does, so. And you just kind of, um, yeah, lay them out like that. Give them enough space around them to, to get good air circulation so that they dry out good. <clears throat> And these are the ones that were bent. You can see it makes it easier if they're straight when it comes to racking. So, like I said, be sure and use a straight container if you have one available. This is about an eight pound batch. Eight pounds of, uh, of fillets there, so give you an idea of what it uh, produces. This will pretty much fill these trays up just right. That's the fish all racked up. Um, this part's optional. We'll do some crushed red pepper on some and then do some uh, some cracked black pepper on some other parts. And this just gives it a nice nice little bite. So we'll let it sit on this rack here for maybe an hour or so before we start smoking it. That'll give the uh, brine a chance to kind of tack up and create more of a glaze on it. So we'll come back once that's uh, sticky and um, yeah, put it in the smoker. Alright guys, so we're all set up here, so we'll just go ahead and throw some wood chips in our pan here. Just got some apple wood chips today. Uh, we just pour them in dry here. Sometimes you can damp them if you want, but when it's cold in the winter time like this, you can just do them dry and they'll be fine. And we'll just let her go, just like that. So we'll usually give it uh, maybe three or four smokes, but uh, usually just go by taste. And also you want to keep an eye on the dryness of the fish. If you start seeing the skinny pieces drying out, then you'll want to pull them off the rack. We'll get to that, but for now we'll just let that go. Alright guys, so it's been about uh, four or five hours now. I've put two smokes on it so far. Now usually about halfway through the smoking I'll rotate the racks. Make sure the bottom ones aren't getting too dry and uh, also give the top ones a chance to dry a little more. We'll go ahead and swap these out. Looking very nice. And at this point you can also poke a couple, make sure they're not getting too dry. The top ones usually take longer so these ones will have a have a few more hours out anyway, put another smoke on them, and see how they look. Alright, so some of these pieces are ready to come out. So to tell if they're ready to come out, you just kind of poke them. If they feel uh, kind of dry and uh, crispy, they're definitely ready to come off. This one here has a little bit of give like that. Alright, so that's a few of them there. The rest of these need to go a little longer, maybe another uh, another hour or so in the, in the smoker. You won't put more smoke on, just uh, let them keep dehydrating. Once I'm done picking out all the dry ones, I'll uh, just 
uh, let them cool down and then we'll stick them in a just a Ziploc bag and also just be aware when you stick them in the bag that the moisture content inside the fish will equalize and kind of uh, spread out through the crusty ones or the the drier ones so they'll get a little softer over time when you put them in the fridge. I broke this one open as you can see there's still some opaque kind of pink there that means there's still a little bit uh, too much moisture in it so you want that to kind of dry out until it's more translucent and um, but really it's down to preference preference you can eat it this way if you want but uh, we we like ours a little more dry so and here's one that's a little bit more done that one's getting close to what we usually take them off at so keep an eye on them once they start getting firm and just uh, crack a couple open like that all right so that's it for this video hopefully you guys find it useful and uh, can practice these methods and this recipe at home and if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and uh, comment down below let me know what you thought and uh, subscribe for more from EIS Alaska see you next time